All right, folks, so today we're going to be talking about doing a decision tree in R. First, you're going to want to load in various packages that you may need. Um, in my case, I didn't end up using Caret or ISLR, I believe. Um, R part plot helps with uh, building the tree as well as visualizing it, and R part runs it as well. Rattle was just something that I had uh, downloaded to mess around with a couple visualizations. So I'm going to clear my environment here. So we're going to start by um, requiring various packages that we're going to use. Next, I'm going to load in my data. Here I'm using this function, and I'm specifying the file path. In a Mac, it's pretty easy to get. At the end, I'm specifying the range of my data. Um, another option here is to use uh, file choose, which basically pops up a window uh, where you can uh, choose your file. I'm not going to do that here. Now I'm going to use the SDR function to examine the data. One thing that you'll notice is we have our different variables here, the type of variable, which is a character in our uh, case now. And we have a seventh, seventh column here with a bunch of NAs that we're going to want to take care of. Um, so to do that, I'm going to run this line here. And uh, typically with is NA or NA omit, it's going to look at um, NAs across the whole thing, but I'm only interested in NAs in one single column because I had taken out the NAs in the other columns. So you'll notice that it goes down by one variable here because that knocked out the seventh row, sorry, the seventh column. Um, next, I'm going to use head to check the data. And this basically just gives us an idea of, of the structure of the, of the uh, sheet as well, a little bit different from STR. And tail is going to um, let us look at the bottom of this. Um, I would run complete cases and this next line um, as well to make sure that I don't have any missing cases in my data. I know that I don't because I cleaned it in Excel, but if you were to run this, it would knock out um, any missing cases. Next, I'm going to create some factors because we're dealing with categorical data here. So I'm going to condense each of these into these little names here. Um, so we have around... Um, I believe six predictors or five possibly and accident will be um, our uh, criterion variable so I'm going to run these now so just to inspect um, how our factoring went I'm just going to look at the levels here for example occupation we have civil servant um, people regular employees new hires part-time uh, employees, self-employed people, and students. I'm also going to verify that um, we did actually factor them successfully by saying is factor, then I'm going to check on just two random variables here, hours and accident, and that will print out true. I'm going to recheck the structure of our data, even though that's not necessary at this point. Um, if you did want to visualize a couple different things, um, you can use ggplot, which I loaded earlier. So here I'm going to see the file name, and then I'm going to just have a couple of different uh, parameters that I'm adding to this. So we can see accident here. Um, if you look at the counts, they're fairly even. Uh, yes and no accidents. And we're going to run ggplot here to uh, visualize this as well. So before we run anything, I'm going to introduce you to the data now. So if we pull this up, we have a couple different variables, hours, accident, POS, which is position, occupation, educational level, and season. What we're attempting to do is basically find the combination of these variables that best predict accidents in the workplace. And uh, we're going to use our part to do that. So now I'm going to run our part here to create our decision tree. Che data, that's our data. Accident is the variable that we would like to predict. Now we specify the predictors here, specify the data, and then the method class is classification. That will now create another object called analysis. And I have a couple different ways that you can visualize your results here. So we'll attempt this one first, our part plot, analysis, and then we have a couple different things that I chose out of the vignette for this package. And you can see uh, we have a printout of our, of our results here. In our case, again, we're trying to predict um, what leads to accidents. So um, 
we have a little bit of an interactive thing here. Uh, I had specified SNP equals true here, which basically looks allows us to look at more information um, in different parts of the graph if you're interested in that. Um, but the biggest thing is you can kind of just look at the different probabilities associated with these variables. Uh, so for example, if we go to the right, and this one's a little bit more difficult to look at actually, so let's let's look at a simpler one here, just using our part plot. So if we go to the right, we have our first split here, which is the most significant predictor. Um, and then from there, it's basically an iterative process of breaking things down according to uh, chi-square variables, sorry, values. Um, so we're looking at education here, um, a baccalaureate degree, degree, diploma, secondary education. If they don't have those things, we go to the right and down to here. The probability of having an accident according to our data is 68%. And you can basically follow that logic throughout the, the tree to see different um, significant predictors of having an accident. Uh, PRP is a little bit different of a way uh, to analyze this. You can see there's a little bit less information. And then uh, using the rattle package, you can also look at fancy R plot, um, which is basically just a smoother way of displaying things. And uh, in terms of visualizing, this might be the um, easiest way to do it. Uh, so moving on, I, I kind of uh, looked at splitting the data and um, kind of training and testing to see um, how well our data um, kind of applies to new data sets that it hasn't seen the test data set in that case. Um, so it's recommended to set the seed. Uh, so this basically um, makes what you're doing reproducible. So if someone on your team um, were to go through a similar process, they would actually um, be looking at a similar, um, it should be the same uh, test and training data set. So we're gonna set the seed here. And now I'm going to basically create an index. Um, so this basically should show up as a random number generator um, across one of the columns. And that's going to help us randomize our data set. And the reason is, um, in some cases, for example, when we were looking at the head of the data set, um, if you see accident here, it's possible that we just have a bunch of no's the whole way down for a long while and we're not mixed up. And what we do in the training and testing data set is we partition it uh, based on a certain percentage, usually 80%. And if you were to do that, if you were, for example, to take the first 80% of the data and it wasn't shuffled well, it wouldn't be really um, indicative of what the data is actually like because it's not sorted. So basically we're shuffling the deck. So back to that. On line 69, we're going to create this index and then we're going to shuffle it. And if we were to inspect it again, you can see just for example in the accident column, we have a different shuffle of variables here. Um, more so answers here. So no, 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 yes, no, no, no. Before I think it was primarily no's, but regardless. Uh, now we're going to um, split the data set here. We're going to use 70% uh, in this case and using the sort and sample function. And row basically means the whole row, all the rows of my data set. Now we're going to create our training data and our testing data. And they pop up our environment here. Now our test data, which usually has a smaller percentage, is 239 observations. And our training data is 555 observations. This is another way to do it. I wasn't as successful doing it this way, and I guess it's not as eloquent, but basically I'm saying uh, for my, if I'm not going to run this, but I, I would be saying um, the first 650 rows of my data set will now be in train one, and the final rows up to 794 would be in test one. So now we're going to create an object analysis two um, based on our part, so we're going to create another decision tree here. This is just kind of shorthand. And now we're going to use the predict function to say um, how well is this model going to do on our test data set, which it has not seen yet. And in order to evaluate that, we're going to first create a table so that we can um, kind of look at how well it did and then we're going to visualize the table. So this basically is saying um, how accurate is our model in this little contingency chart. So when there is a false 
positive or a false negative, it's going to be inaccurate. Um, we're trying to, of course, be accurate in this case. So looking at this, no and no, this is basically saying, was it predicted as no? And what was the actual result? No, this was accurate, 77 here. In this case, yes and no, this was inaccurate. We have 47 there. So in order to actually kind of <clears throat> quantify how well it did, uh oh, looks like I spelled a word wrong there. <clears throat> um, we're basically going to sum up all the observations and we're also going to sum up the accurate, uh, I guess, um, predictions of our model and then we're going to divide those two things. So we're going to say accurate predictions divided by the sum of all of the predictions and that's going to give us how accurate our model is. And we're going to print that to view the actual accuracy. So our accuracy in the actual cross-validation was 55%, which isn't great, but it can be improved.